There were police everywhere, there were nurses, everyone was in masks and face shields. Oh wow! Oh my god, is that it? Hopefully That's how quick it is. <gasps> Ready to go sleeping? It's a horrible, horrible cockroach smell pilsner. You know when you've been down and out and you're dragging your blanket from building to building and... Well, it's been a while since I was at an airport. I'm just trying to remember the last time we were at an airport. I think it was from... When I flew down just after the birth of our grandson, so that's eight months ago, and from so it's been a while. But here we are in uh, Cross Pine Airport. We just dip on leg one of a lap around Australia. So we're heading down to see the kids in Brisbane today, and then a few days later we're heading over to see the kids in Perth, Western Australia. And then we're doing a bit of a road trip around the north of Australia. Um, and our purpose for the road trip is to visit every single brewery in northern Australia, apart from Cairns. So that is our objective, to visit every single brewery. So we'll see how we go, eh? That's uh, what we're up to at the moment. Cheers. We thank you for choosing to fly with Virgin Australia today. On behalf of your crew, we wish a safe on your journey or a warm welcome home to Brisbane. Have a great afternoon. What just happened? We just arrived into Western Australia, and it was like it was like going it was like a movie. There were, the army was there. There were police everywhere. There were nurses. Everyone was in masks and face shields, and you had to present your pass to get into the state that I grew up in. It was yeah, surreal. So we're just getting our bags now, and they're going to meet our son. So where are we? In Perth. And why are we in Perth? Is this the leg, second leg? This is uh, leg two. This is our second stop on our journey around Northern Australia. Or well, the beginning of our journey around Northern Australia. Yeah, looking forward to it. See ya. Tell me about the flights. They're all mine flights. The only flight that's not a mining flight is ours. <gasps> the rest are all mining flights. Because it was only four days ago that they allowed um, people, to come, in, people yeah. to come back into WA. The borders were completely locked down, apart from essential sort of work. Yeah. So uh, it's all pretty crazy. It's only just started opening the borders, but a few days ago, South Australia was um, shut off again. So it's all very strange. There we go. This is, reminds me of Maxwell Smart when he's in coming through all the doors. <laughs> there's nobody here. This is so weird, there's no one here, eh? Look at this. This is usually full of people. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a little bit odd. This is a domestic airport, it's not even an international. It feels a bit like an international. And there we go, we're going to get our bags and meet our son and head off. What's going on? We are going, we're here at um, Full Drive Super Center to get our rooftop tent pop up thing for our trip across Australia. Is that it? Yeah. That's what we're getting as demoed by these lovely people. One of them, thanks. So, this is 
what we've got. Looks alright. Looks pretty cool. We'll do the job. brass screws but I mean like this is like a kid in a candy shop for a woodworker. Where are we? We're in Timbercon. Wow. Oh, wow look cool. at everything. Is this all I got in Robertson? Is that the brand you need? They're Robertson. They're Robertson. Oh, it's Robertson a type. Yeah. So it's four gauge wow. by three quarter. Oh, wow. And six gauge by 25, exactly what I need. Excellent. I might need eight gauge. Yeah. They need to be slightly bigger. Mm. Mm. So what's the difference with the head of the screw? Tell me about that. Well, it's a Robertson head. Is that old fashioned? No, Robertson's these head here, the square drive. Yeah. They were invented by a man called Robertson in Canada. And you have a special driver for them. See, that's what we need, eight well, they might, You never know, they might have somewhere in the back. Kid in the candy store. There's the candy store right there. Wow. Imagine a workshop having that. You'd never leave. blocks for the boat for sanding. Yeah, we'll be doing a lot of that. So there it is. We've just got to measure it up so we can get some, uh, what are we getting? Sleep. Roof racks and Roof racks. some sheets and things. Sheets and the pillows, not the much as how big it is for the pillows, but <laughs> that's for the sheets. Ooh. Very uh, neat and tidy, I must what a say. a beautiful box. Yeah. It's such a shame to throw the box away. It does. Incredible. That's solid. No, it's like... Look at it. Yeah. So we went for a uh, quickie, which is a sort of pop-up arrangement. Where's the catches? We wanted something that was simple and quick. This is from a company called Kings. What's on that side? Straps? Yep. Which is sort of bottom of the range money-wise. They, they bring some good gear. Ready? Is Ready? that a reveal? Ready for the reveal? What, how's it work? Okay, let's see this. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Is that it? Hope That's how quick it is. Ready to go sleeping. That's pretty cool. All we do is fold these bits down for the rain. And that's it. That's how quick it is. It's a ladder inside. Should be. Colours like baby poo. You going in? Well, I'm going to get it. You going in? I love the simplicity of it. So this is Mark II, isn't it? No, it's our first one. No, but they've modified it from the yeah, original oh, yeah, design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the uh, Quickie, the uh, King's Quickie Mark II. It made a few changes. Right, let's have a look what's inside. A ladder. Yeah, a pretty cool ladder. Telescopic aluminium ladder. Yeah. 
great. Alright, so it just goes up to whatever Whoop. height you need it. Dex. Be an awning. You got in? What's it like? Um, Can you video from the inside? Yeah, so this is from the inside. I'm actually sitting up on my knees, so there's heaps of room. You've got these big things here. They are very interesting. Some of those. You got some pockets here to put your things in. You got these bits of elastic that do must do something. Yeah, it's pretty good. The mattress is reasonably comfortable. It's very long. Apart from these stupid elbow things, where you hit your elbows when you're sleeping. These Come things here. There you go. Where you can win. Don't know. I haven't got in yet. Got my shoes on. Oh wow! Now this will this will do. This will work. It's pretty big, isn't it? Wow, it's a lot bigger than it's like a TARDIS. It's very smart. I don't understand these things. What in the don't corner. you understand? I think they're reinforcement. No, they're, they're, the, they're the light. Well, but is it popped up completely? Yeah. Why are they sticking in your head then? Oh. Are you sure? It's a funny yeah, angle. Yeah, no, the pop it Must completely. be for strength. Yeah. Anyway, it's all good. So. Just come for a spot of lunch and we spotted this little brewery. So we're gonna go and check this joint out. We swear you're back in England. of a Czech style lager, a pale ale, a Hefweizen, dark ale, mild ale, and some seasonal bits and pieces that should be on a menu somewhere. Oh, there's a paddle at the bottom. Oh, I'll get a paddle, yeah. I'm gonna get a paddle. How many is it, five? Uh, yeah, five. We are here at the Last Drop Brewery, brewery pub in uh, Canning Vale, Western Australia. And I've just got a paddle of their beers that they brew on, I don't know, they brew them on site? So. Yeah, I think they brew it on site. So we're going to kick off with their special summer ale, which is one of their regular beers. And uh, I would say it would be a, just a standard summer session beer. Maybe um, we haven't got any information on it. I'd say it'd be about three and a half, four, five percent, four and a half percent. It smells like a summer ale. It's got fruity sort of, yeah, citra tang to it. Not much of anything. It's standard sort of summer beer. And not bad. Um, maybe a seven, seven out of ten. Six to a seven, yeah. That's the first one. Second beer we're going to try out of the five uh, is the Last Drop Pilsner. Um, standard Czech style Pilsner, apparently, four and a half percent. It's uh, it's Pilsner colour. It's a horrible cockroach smell Pilsner. Um, Pilsner to me, the smell is, reminds me of, you know, when you've been in, when you're sort of, you know, when you've been down and out and you're dragging your blanket from building to building and um, and your blanket starts to smell of like cockroaches and, 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 and rat poo. That's what Pilsner smells like to me, but it tastes nice. Not that I've ever dragged a blanket from building to building, but... Just, you know, that could have been the scenario. Mm. 
but then sometimes you get surprised and you find a new blanket and it smells like vanilla and that's what it tastes like. It tastes a little bit bubbly. I mean, it's just a natural carbonate, carbonation of Pilsner and the follow through. A four, maybe, or a three. Yeah, it's a Pilsner. So the next beer out of the one, two, three, out of the five beers is their Pale Ale. It's a 4.8%. Um, they told me that there's, they're using five different hop varieties and three different malts to put this together. So I'd say it'd be a US style, American Pale Ale, which will be very hoppy, very um, fruity, uh, and a little bit overdone for an IPA. Um, they should have called an APA if they're using that many hops. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's hoppy. What? It's like you know when when you were like eight and a half months old, and your parents gave you lemon for the first time, and it sort of hit your tongue, and you were just give just bang, and you had that sensation of of craziness on your tongue. It's just too much going on in this. It's the same crazy sort of craziness. It's not a IPA really. It's a it's like a hoppy boutique craft beer. You go, I wouldn't call that an IPA. And it smells like a whole a whole bouquet of of aromatic hops. It's a fun beer, you know, if you want to impress your mates, something you just made, uh, and you give them this, they go, wow, aren't you clever? But it's not being clever, it's just using a lot of really aromatic hops. And it's quite bitter, it's got a heap of, heap of bitterness in there, so you, yeah, it's, it's not a clever beer, but an exciting one. Uh, again, not a high rater, I'd say a six. Yeah, Let's see what Wendy reckons this one. So I'll turn the camera around in a second. She loves hockey stuff. Cheers. Action. All right, so I've got this smelly one. Ooh. Yeah, it's very smelly. Oh, it's very bitter, very, very bitter. And as Magnus said, you know, I'm, you know how much I love hops. Not. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd go two. Oh wow! Not, not a fan. Sorry, guys. Not a fan. So we've got the two left here, which will be one of them will be my favourite. I mean, I love a good um, a good wheat beer, and of course, you never know those a lot of the dark ales. So okay. we're going to go the wheat next. All right. So I stand at Heffenweizen. I don't know how you pronounce that in. Austrian or uh, Bavarian. Looks like a typical wheat beer. Um, bright colour, bright cloudiness. You can definitely 100% tell this is a wheat beer. Um, this is, for those of you from Western Australia or watching, will um, remember when a real famous beer came out of Fremantle called Redback. Um, and as soon as you got a red back, this is the exact same smell. So they've nailed the wheat beer uh, aroma. Um, let's see what it tastes like. All I can taste, remember when you were a kid and you got your bag of mixed lollies and um, and you had like, you had gobstoppers and you had, um, you had milk bottles and you had raspberries and you had everything in there, but you had one banana in there, right? And every single thing tasted like that one banana. This is all that one banana. So all you can really taste is banana milkshake. Um, with a little bit of clovey sort of taste.
but that is just a banana milkshake. A lot of wheat beers do taste like banana, but not as strong as this one. So, again, not a high rater, maybe a six. Um, we'll see what Shane reckons. Cheers. <laughs> it tastes his milk. Yeah. Like Banana lollies. Yeah, nah, I like it. <laughs> it is just like that banana. The, yeah. the, I can exactly. see it in my mind's eye. Yeah. In fact, I'll put a little picture of it up there. The little banana lolly. Yeah. Exactly what it tastes like. That's horrible. Zero. Whoa. <laughs> <a> zero. <laughs> All right, so the last of the five beers, and we haven't had much of a success so far, is my favourites are the Dark Ale. So it's their Dark Ale, it's a 4.8, was it? 4.5. 4.5. I've been using all the, even before I, I was gonna say before I smell it, I know what it's gonna taste like. It's gonna taste like uh, a paint, by numbers dark ale. It smells like a paint by numbers dark ale. Wow, it's. I'm getting used to the fact that we're not in England and we're not drinking beer at the right temperatures, like dark ales at the right temperatures. And we're not drinking beer made for a particular certain type of person that likes beer flavoured in a particular way. It's mass produced. So it's like a mass produced dark ale. But you know when when you've been out working hard on the farm and like you want to go for a just go for a little leisurely ride on your horse and you walk in the stables and you get that beautiful aroma of of horse dung and it's just like it's that real nice aroma you expect from a dark ale and then you turn your back and it's like a moose and you got moose dung yeah it's not what you it's not what i expect a dark ale to be it's it's just made for the masses it's got it has another punch I bet you if we left this to warm up for half an hour, if we had the colonometer and checked it to the right temperature, it would change its flavour and it would develop a bit of flavour. Being this cold, um, you can't really get the flavours you, you need. So, it's not bad. I'm disappointed. Um, but it's not bad. It's nice to come back to a brewery, which is the whole aim of this whole trip, is to brewery hop. Um, so we've started off at the last drop to have our first drop um, and so far there's nothing to write home about, nothing to brag about. So far the, I think the Pale Ale um, is the winner out of these five with its, do I give it a seven? Yeah. I mean it's a, a it's not really a, sorry it's not a Pale Ale, IPA, Indian Pale Ale, it's more of an APA. Uh, or just a pale ale. It hasn't got that um, IPA twang to it really. But anyway, it's, it's great to be here, great to be with family, um, great to be drinking beer in a brewery, and we're just going to have something to eat in a minute. So, um, yeah, cheers. Now, we came here for the beer, uh, which is over there. But look at this tucker. How's that for a little? Bit of seafood platter for one, and then some uh, salt, salt and pepper squid. And what are you having, mate? I'm having a uh, pesto chicken pesto, pesto pasta. Chicken. So there we go. The tucker looks absolutely sensational. 